I play a lot of tabletop RPG and war games and board games, and I'll admit I'm often drawn to the ones with complex rules, but that doesn't mean I want every game I play to have complex rules. Sure, part of the fun of tabletop gaming for me is seeing how the interaction of rules affect the simulated world of the game, but tabletop gaming is called gaming for a reason. Sometimes I actually want to just sit down and have fun, and that's why I developed Havoc. A simple RPG with six hit points and a death wish, and I've just released it under the new Orc license. Havoc core rules fit on one page, but the book I've published on DriveThroughRPG.com contains about 20 pages of detail in case you need more explanation, and then 40 pages of ideas for the Game Master. I designed the game to answer 10 problems I have with most RPG systems, and here they are, one by one, along with how Havoc solves them. One separate genre from rules. The relationship of mechanics and a game's genre is one of the most fascinating aspects of RPG game design. Why do most fantasy games favor a class-based system while modern and sci-fi games tend to be skill-based? Is it habitual because the first RPG used a class-based system, or is there something more to the idea of quasi-historical archetypes and myths that just make sense for that genre? Why does a D100 system seem reasonable for some games and not for others? The list goes on, and it's fun to ponder, but honestly I think it's basically academic. No matter what genre of RPG you're playing, it all boils down to rolling dice to find out whether what you want your character to do is what your character actually does. Havoc has no genre. Its rules are simple, governing success or failure, and very little else. Play it in a fantasy setting, a sci-fi setting, horror, secret agent, whatever you want. 2. Character creation. Nobody wants to get invited to a game only to spend two hours filling out tax forms, and that's what character creation can feel like. Character creation in Havoc is this. Choose an ancestry appropriate to your game's genre. Choose a name and three dominant traits. For instance, a spy might be sneaky, charismatic, and athletic, while a librarian might be intelligent, stealthy, and eclectic. You have six build points. Assign them to these three categories. Body, mind, and soul. Those govern and control exactly what they sound they would govern and control. Once you've done that, add one to each category. You have six health points. That's it. Start playing. Three. No target numbers. The one thing I tend to hate about being a game master is setting target numbers, like a difficulty class in Tales of the Valiant or Pathfinder. It feels too much like playing God when I just want to play the world. Luckily, most game master guides provide examples of what reasonable target numbers are, but in practice you often end up feeling like you have to adjust them to account for magic items or really high level characters. You adjust them because you want to challenge your players, but moving goalposts feels a little bit like cheating to me. In Havoc, there are no target numbers. A player rolls the number of six-sided dice listed next to either body, mind, or soul, whatever is appropriate to what they're doing. On a roll of five or six, it's a success. On a one, you cancel out one five or six. Rolling one failure cancels out one success, in other words. So if you have two dice in body and you roll a one and a five, then you've failed. The one cancels out the five. But if you have three dice in soul and you roll a one and a five and then another five, you still have a success left over after that one cancels out the first five, so you succeed. Four, no damage rolls. Rolling dice is fun until you have to do it eight times in a row just to figure out whether you've hit your enemy's armor class and whether you've dealt damage and how much damage you've done and whether you've done sneak attack damage and on and on. In Havoc, one hit equals one damage. Some special items do more damage than that but it's always a pre-calculated amount. How do you determine whether you hit? Well, I already told you. Roll five or six for success. Five, fast combat. Combat takes way too long in most fantasy and many sci-fi systems. Characters have a hundred hit points plus a bunch of magic items to keep them alive, and in order to make the combat feel threatening, the monsters have to keep getting more and more resilient as characters level up. In Havoc, player characters have six hit points. That's it. Most hits only deal one damage, so players can take a lot of hits, but rarely more than five. Monster stats are the same as player stats, so there's no complex monster stat block to decode or to try to frantically parse during combat. Six. 
no saving throws. Traps that require saving throws are boring. If you're going to go to the trouble of having traps in a dungeon or a, an abandoned spaceship, then they may as well hit. All traps in Havoc automatically hit. When appropriate, the Game Master can allow a player to roll body, mind, or soul to cancel out damage. One success cancels one damage. 7. Damage equals experience. When you take damage in Havoc from an enemy in combat, you gain an equal amount of experience points. That's not the only way you earn experience. You can also earn experience by making friends with an NPC or exploring your surroundings. 8. Everything falls apart eventually. Magic items and advanced technology is single use. Sounds crazy, I know, but bear with me. Whether a player character is a wizard reading magical scrolls, a cleric searching for holy relics, or an investigator uncovering impossible alien technology, the powerful items players acquire in Havoc are only good for one use, and then they become mundane. Everyday items that fit into a setting can be used as usual, but the really remarkable items that you and I would call magic or impossible become paperweights after they're used. This gives players a reason to go out into the world and explore. It's why adventurers in Havoc risk life and limb to delve into dungeons, or board abandoned spaceships or sp space stations, or go into haunted buildings. Player characters in Havoc are more often looking for health potions than for gold, because gold doesn't really influence that much in a game. What matters is staying alive, and you do that by augmenting your health points and by being more powerful than your threats. 9. Magic just works. Magic or impossible tech, they don't have attack rolls or a spell DC, they just work. It's a one-time use spell anyway, so who cares? It, it just succeeds. You use it, you take one damage from the strain of using it, and some hugely powerful effect happens. It's satisfying, exciting, and you want more of it. Which means you have to go and have more adventures to find more. 10. The license. There's no two ways about it. Wizards of the Coast upended the RPG community and industry at the end of 2022 when they tried to put a stop to open community collaboration. The community came to its own rescue and made it clear that no company owned our creativity, and Paizo, publisher of Pathfinder, stepped in and paid a law firm to develop a license for our brave new world of corporate near dystopia. The Orc license spells out what free culture and collaboration actually means in legal terms with clarity and precision that the old open game license was just too naive to have addressed. The OGL was written in a time when people still sort of expected that companies were bound by their promises and legal text. The Orc license doesn't make any assumptions. The Orc license is a strongly worded license, but it's easy to use. In short, you make four declarations. You declare that that you're using the ORC license, you tell others how you want to be credited when they use your content, you identify what stuff you reserve for your own use, in other words, stuff that other people can't reuse from your work, and then you identify what stuff would normally be reserved but that you are granting people permission to use as long as they also use the ORC license. There's example text in the license itself, so you can just copy and paste the declarations right into your document and just modify it to suit your product. I think Wizards of the Coast should pay Paizo back for the legal fees as a sign of good faith, and it's really the only way they could ever start to rebuild trust with me. Probably not going to happen. It's an exciting license to have on our side, though, and it's even more exciting that we all actually own it. Paizo has released the license into the public domain, which is something Wizards of the Coast never did with the OGL. I feel like most gamers agree that we're in a golden age of gaming right now. There are amazing games for tabletop, and we have unprecedented means of distributing them. If you want a copy of Havoc, purchase a copy on drivethroughrpg.com. The link is in the description below, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.